This story is about, you know, around the time when Jesus was about to be crucified, okay? Um, what happens in that story is that there is two thieves that are going to be crucified along with Jesus, okay? So, um, right before that's happened, um, these thieves mock Jesus. And one of the things that they um, say is somewhere along the lines of, you know, you're, you're Jesus, you're supposed to be this guy, but you, you are not even able to help yourself in this situation. It's very interesting for me to see that because to me, Jesus is the epitome of um, unconditional love and acceptance, right? And, um, and the present moment, right? So the, the two thieves in this story, I see them as the past and the future. And Jesus is kind of the present. He's there. He's accepting everything that is happening to him in the moment because he has taken this, this physical form and he is not resisting anything that's happening to him. Okay. He's very accepting of all of what's going on. He, he has the knowledge and, and the acceptance of where he's going to go next. So he's not as, as bothered or as freaked out as, you know, everyone around him. Right. Um, so when the two thieves are mocking Jesus, uh, it's a very interesting, um, interesting thing going on there because in our lives, okay, if we are to think about the present moment, how are these thieves robbing us from this present moment? The th one of the thieves being the past and the other thief being the future. Just as how these thieves were mocking Jesus and trying to distract him from whatever's going on, and, and, and Jesus is just being there and um, kind of, you know, accepting all of this, we can see in our lives how the past and the future rob us, you know, constant thought patterns generating, pulling us either to our past, either to our identification with who we have been um, previously, um, what we have gone through previously, what is what our tribal associations are, right? And and all of us have tribal association. And and I'm wearing red because this is the root chakra, um, representing the root chakra, the tribal um, power, right? All of us um, have that, and some of us, most of the time, actually, all of us tend to over-identify with our tribal consciousness, with with who we are. You know, we have this rigid mindset about being this person, right? In actuality, all of life is fluid, right? We're all, it's, it's all happening every unfolding moment we're changing, but that realization is hard to come by sometimes. All right, so let's not uh, digress and, and go to that direction. But what I'm saying is how do these thieves, the, the future and the past, how are they robbing us from the present moment? You know, um, this is not to say that any future planning is, is not good. This is not saying that, right? This, this is not that, that we should not plan for the future. The idea is to plan for the future staying in this present moment. So in other words, if we live our present moment um, in the fullest way possible, the future is bound to be beautiful. Okay, so um, it's okay to plan, but how many times do we plan versus we fixate on what's going to happen to us in the future, right? How many times um, does that take us away? You know, all of the anxiety that comes from thinking about what's going to happen in the future. And, and some of, actually most of what we are thinking about is, is not going to happen to us in the future. But in the present moment, constant bombardment of what may happen or what we would like to like for it to happen in our lives, you know, such thoughts and, and such identification with who we are trying to portray ourselves as in two years, five years, 15 years from now is constantly robbing us from being in that present moment, just as past is robbing us by pulling us, giving us that identity, you know, pushing that to us in, in, in this in this present moment where it's not allowing us to be fluid. It's just, it's just that's not the nature of reality. The nature of reality is it's always flowing and moving on, becoming every second. It's becoming something else, something other than what it was 10 minutes ago, two minutes ago, five seconds ago, 
and even as I'm speaking, I'm evolving, I'm changing, and you're changing, you're evolving um, as you are listening to this from a uh, molecular level, from a spiritual level, from an energetic level. All of us are going and becoming, which is something that, you know, it's, it's so much better to experience that as we unfold versus to try to figure out what it is every single time you turn around. So what this story of these thieves that were mocking Jesus is teaching us is that being in the present moment is difficult. And it, it, it often so happens that even when we are at a elevated state of consciousness, um, the, the, these thieves are constantly there. If, we, if they're not in check at any given moment, they are going to try to bring us down. Okay, so I hope this parable and this, um, this example made sense to you. Um, I would like to hear it in the comment section. Peace.